my name is Greg Johnson and this is another training video from resourcesforlife.com and it's uh, actually number eight in a series of videos on how to set up a Windows XP computer. There are a lot of older uh, previously owned computers out there that people are buying and wanting to refurbish so this series of videos helps with that process. What you're going to see here um, up till this point what we've done is installed some updates you can go back and watch the other videos and just finished installing Service Pack 2. We're going to walk through some of those little clips and I'm going to continue that process here in this video in segment 8. So let's zoom in on the computer and continue. In the previous video we basically went through the process of installing Service Pack 2 on the computer and upon restarting um, there's a message here about turning on automatic updates now. So part of the purpose of these service packs is to make Windows a little more secure and to encourage users to automatically update Windows. In, in doing that there will be some of these service pack updates or Windows updates uh, I should say that will prevent or block certain or correct for certain vul vulnerabilities, security problems within Windows. So um, here as we're starting up immediately after the Windows XP Service Pack 2 install that is a message that comes up and it's probably a good idea to go ahead and turn on automatic updates. Um, you'll notice if you've been following these videos along that prior to Service Pack 2 Windows XP was pretty quick. With Service Pack 2 now it's taking a little longer to start up. This is where the operating system starts to become a little bit bloated and this was actually years ago when we got to Service Pack 2. Service Pack 3 was only more recent. You'll notice now there's a message that's telling us that there's no virus protection. Again, uh, an initiative on Microsoft's part to make the end user a little more savvy about computer protection. I'm going to close this security center out and what I'll go ahead and do because uh, I'm at a point now where I I want to go ahead and just let the computer run and call it quits, I'm going to go ahead and at least start the process of the Windows updates, which maybe will work at this point. Um, interestingly, when only Service Pack 1 was installed, Microsoft would not even allow me to do this uh, Windows updates. It looks like now it might be possible, so I'm going to click on uh, Express for Windows updates. This is the first time I've been able to do this. Um, and I'm just going to point out here where it says Get Microsoft Update Today. Eventually we're going to want to do that because there are some Microsoft software programs that are really kind of part of Windows, but they don't get updated with Windows. And so we need to specifically request, yes, we want not just Windows updates, but also the Microsoft updates. Um, so anyway, this is a good point to pause the computer, this process of checking for the latest updates for your computer. This does take a little while because it needs to scan the computer hard drive just to kind of see where things are at and that's evidence uh, by this green light flickering down here which is the hard drive light um, tells you that it's just spinning and spinning and spinning that hard drive scanning the system to find out what updates are needed. So anyway I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause the video and come back once this scanning process is done. The first time when you run this Windows Update, um, you'll get a message on the screen telling you that uh, information sent over the internet is possibly viewable by other people. You can go ahead and click OK on that. And you can't really run Windows Update until you update Windows Update. There's, um, anyway, that's kind of explained in these updates, and this is a common screen to see coming up. So this portion of the update is really just, uh, as it says here, downloading Microsoft Windows Installer 3.1 and once this is downloaded and installed which goes really quick then you can continue the process of getting the necessary updates installed. Something else you'll see installed along the way and possibly updated is the 
Windows Genuine Advantage Validation Tool. It's a tool that Microsoft uses to confirm that you're actually a legal and valid user of Windows. And if you're not, you can't get any more updates, so it kind of makes the program worthless. But anyway, at this point, um, we're required to go ahead and restart the computer before we can get Windows Update to work. So I'm going to do that now and continue this later on. So basically where we're at right now is the Windows Update software had to be updated itself before we could continue with any more updates. Uh, I know that sounds kind of confusing, but that's just kind of how Windows is. So anyway, I'm going to go back into Windows Update, which in Windows XP is actually a web page on the Microsoft.com uh, you know, site. So here we'll go ahead and click on Express, which is fine for doing these uh, updates. And this process right now is going to take a little while. It needs to scan the entire computer to find out you know, what's installed on the computer and compare that to what is available from Microsoft uh, as far as updates. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and then we'll continue once it's completed the scan. Well, as you can see from this list, there are 74 updates that are needed right now um, after having updated to Windows XP Service Pack 2. And sometimes what I do, and this is just a tip for you technicians out there, is I'll go ahead and click somewhere in here, and then on the keyboard I'll press Control and the letter A to select all of that. So see how it's all selected now? And then I'll do Control and the letter C to copy it. Um, so it's basically Control A, select, Control C to copy. And then I go into the Start menu, and find Notepad from the Accessories uh, group here. And within Notepad, I'll paste that in. Um, it's helpful sometimes to have some documentation to show your clients, you know, what work you've been doing. And so you can say, you know, here are these 78 updates I installed, or 74 in this case. Um, and then I go ahead and just put in the, the date, the year, and uh, the month, and the day, day of the week, and then the time is helpful to have. So you can kind of track your work and I think it's helpful uh, as I say to document what you're doing so I'll just put in here Windows updates and it's also useful to know if there is a problem you know after having done some updates on the computer suddenly the graphics card doesn't work or whatever you can you can backtrack and figure out what went wrong right so if you don't document any of your work if you don't keep track of what you're doing you're going to have a difficult time figuring out what went wrong and what caused it. So that's another reason to do this. Well, anyway, installing these uh, 74 updates is going to take a little while, so I'm going to click the Install button. I'll go ahead and accept whatever license agreements pop up here, but it's, um, as you can see, I'll zoom in, you know, 542 megabytes of, uh, or KB, I'm sorry, 542 KB of data, which actually seems like a small number but with 74 updates it's going to take a while so I'm gonna pause the video and give you an idea of the time perspective on here it is currently 842 uh, and the contrast here makes it hard to see that clock but there we go 843 and we're just beginning this installation of these 74 updates so I'll come back in just a little bit again to give you an idea of the timing of all of this um, we just finished downloading update 74 of 74 and now it's starting the installation process and the time is 8.53 p.m. so uh, this kind of uh, thing can take a long time and you just have to be patient in fact just the downloading of the first item seemed to go for like five minutes or something it was almost as if the computer had locked up but you just again need to be patient wait for it to download one thing you can kind of keep an eye on is Notice how here the hard drive light is flickering, but at times it's solid. So that's also an indication that the computer is just you know, running and thinking and downloading and processing. So if things seem to be not going anywhere, it could be just that it's, it's trying to uh, complete the current task.